Hey guys, uh, here's a little video just going through those couple examples that we didn't have time for in class. I know some classes got this one, um, but not everybody did. So I'll just redo both of these, and I think that should be enough to get you going on the homework. Uh, the first thing is, for this one, while you got the parallel lines, those two angles do not fit any of the, any of the you know, pairs that we talked about. So, you know, they're not corresponding, they're not alternate interior, they're not alternate exterior, they're not consecutive interior, they're not a linear pair, they're not vertical angles, there's, there's no special name for those two. All right, so what we have to do is just kind of use our other knowledge to sort of manipulate the picture so that these two do have a relationship. And, you know, you can go a whole bunch of different ways with this one. I, I find the quickest way, uh, just in my mind anyway, is I just kind of look for the vertical angles. Those are kind of the easiest uh, switch. So like in the... GS, you know, in the uh, geometry program thing that I showed you today, you know, I kind of move the one and the two back and forth really easily. That's kind of the way I think. So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this one here, and say that those two angles, angle ABC, is congruent to angle DBF. And you can say because of the vertical angles theorem. So you instantly can basically manipulate these. Now somebody might say, Mr. Miller, what about, you know, can I do that here? Absolutely. But I'm trying to get it so that these two, you know, this expression and this expression have a relationship. If I just move this one, you know, using vertical angles here, I instantly recognize a relationship here. If I were to move, um, you know, this one down here, I'm not sure I've got anything for those two. Okay, so you got to kind of pick something that makes, you know, the problem go a little further and you don't want to keep getting stuck. So I think that's probably the quickest. Somebody might say, what if I move this one all the way up here? You know, because those are corresponding, absolutely. And then you could try to find the relationship here. So I just happen to pick this one, so I'm gonna go with it. And hopefully you realize those two angles are now in consecutive interior positions or same side interior positions, which means of course they have to be supplementary. So I'm gonna actually set up my equation, three X minus seven plus X plus five must equal 180. And that one would be the consecutive interior angles theorem. Or same side interior angles theorem, both would be okay. So that's the real connection. So you kind of need something first, a little bit of you know prior knowledge, whatever, however you're gonna do it, um, or even new knowledge really, to be honest with you. But you have to move this into a position where it actually will match up in one of the new ways uh, with the new relationships. So now we can actually solve it. 4x, right, 3x and x is 4x, negative seven and five is negative two, so minus two equals 180. 4x then equals 182, so then x has to be, what's that become, 45.2, um, or 45.5 I mean? Okay, so x is 45.5. Let's actually plug it back in and see if that makes sense, <coughs> excuse me. If I plug 45.5 back in here, right, I'm going to get 45.5 plus 5, which is 50.5. So this angle here, BFG, is 50.5 degrees. Now I'll plug it into here. 3 times 45.5 minus 7. What's that become? Well, this is going to be 90, 135, 136.5, I think. 45.5 times 3, yep, minus 7 is 129.5, oops, sorry, I didn't realize I was cut off there, 129.5 degrees is angle DBF, just to check it. 129.5 plus 50.5 is in fact 180 degrees. Okay, so you know you did it right. It's a good way to check. All right, so that one's a little more complicated. That one's a little more complicated, but still doable. All right, for this next one, it actually isn't as complicated as the one we just did. You just have to kind of understand what it's asking for. So they're telling you you have this taxiway being constructed, and it intersects two parallel runways at the airport. So here are the runways, and here is the taxiway going across. You know that the measure of angle 2 is 98 degrees, so as soon as I hear that, I'm putting in 98 degrees, and they want me to figure out the measure of angle 1, which is this one here. So I know that these two runways are parallel. So I'm gonna mark that in my picture so I remember that those are parallel. And as soon as you do that, I'm sure pretty much all of you watching right now are like, wait, I know what angle one is. But you have to make sure you know what you got. You got your parallel lines, you got your transversal, they gave me one of the angles, and now I just need to figure out what's the 
you know, what's the relationship between those two? All right, those two are alternate interior, and alternate interior angles must be congruent. So this angle is congruent to that angle. So the measure of angle one is 98 degrees. How do I know? Because of the alternate interior angles theorem. T-H-E-O-R-E-M, there we go. Okay, and that's basically how you do it. So you're gonna use all of these from our notes, right? We're gonna use corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior. We're gonna use the postulate or theorem that goes with it. And that's gonna get us those relationships so that we can actually solve problems like these. Okay, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know. Hope you guys have a great weekend. See ya.